them speak for themselves. All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot, that thrilling, exciting story of the sea. In our last adventure, Johnny and Sue, with first mate George Wainwright and old peg leg Dickon, hid in the secret compartment Altesti had used and listened to a very startling conversation between Altesti and the owner of the ship, Paul Parrot, Ezra Grange, in Grange's cabin. In that conversation, every bit of the mystery was cleared up. The map Ezra Grange has and the true purpose of the cruise of the Paul Parrot is the key to a very valuable mineral vein on a small South Sea island, and half of this map really belongs to Johnny's father. Altesti has wanted this map. That's why he has caused so much trouble. And now he threatens to reveal Grange's plot to cheat young Johnny if Grange will not let him in as a partner. When Grange refuses, Altesti produces a gun, and at that moment, Captain Dalton, who has heard everything, demands entrance to the cabin. Grange realizes his plot has been discovered and opens the door while Altesti plans to shoot Captain Dalton as he enters. However, Cap Wainwright hurls Dickens wooden leg at Altesti and knocks the gun out of his hand. A great struggle ensues in which Dalton knocks out Grange, but Altesti suddenly grabs a knife, seizes Sue, and threatens to stab her if he is followed. The men all stand back at wit's end while Altesti is retreating into the secret passage back to the hold and carrying Sue with him. Blow me down. Our hands are tied. We can't follow the lover into the hold. He might harm little Sue. Well, I'm going to save Sue. And I'll have her free in ten minutes. Wait a minute, lad. You'll only be hurt trying to outwit Altesti. And you'll put Sue in greater danger. Don't worry. I won't let Altesti see me. I'll be careful. Alaska, Roy, what do you suppose the lad means to do? He can't do anything, George. He's just excited. He likes little Sue. You can lay to that. He's probably just gone on deck to think up some boyish plan. Captain Dalton! Captain Dalton! Mr. Grange is coming, too. Well, after that blow you gave him on the chin, Roy, I'm surprised he didn't stay asleep a lot longer. Oh, where, where am I? Oh, oh so I'm here. Yeah, I remember. You've gotten us into a pretty reef, Grange. Oh. If you hadn't tried to help that swab El Testy, your sister wouldn't be in danger now. My sister? What's happened to her? Where is she? And, and where's El Testy? El Testy grabbed her and rushed down the passageway. We couldn't follow her. He'd have used his knife. You mean that scoundrel has Sue in his hands? Good Lord, we've got to get her free. You should have thought of that before you hooked into Altesti's dirty game, Grange. Oh, what have I done? If anything happens to Sue, it'll be... Oh, what can we do? What do you suppose he's going to do to her? Well, my guess is that he'll camp in the hold and keep Sue as a protection. He'll probably be wanting us to set him a sea in a boat with some provisions. And not until then will he free the girl. That's my guess too, George. We'll have to go down in the hold with a white flag and offer him protection until he hands Sue over to us. Pardon me, sirs, but he can't stay there below forever or he'd starve. Uh, not much chance of that, Dickon. Since we know that Red Mulholy was in this plan with him, Red must have kept him well supplied with provisions when he hid below in that secret passage. He'll still have enough to last him for some time. But for heaven's sakes, give him anything he wants, anything to save Sue. It seems to me, Grange, you're blooming soft-hearted all of a sudden. Up to now, nobody's life has meant much to you and your scheme and cheat and plans of getting money. Oh, I know. I know. I deserve all you can say about me. I guess I deserve that blow, Captain. I realize now what a fool I've been. But nothing matters now that Sue's in trouble. She's very dear to me, and we've got to speak to Altesti and talk terms. I'm glad to hear you talk like that. It brings back some of my faith in men. But you're right. We're wasting words up here. We've got to get below and talk to that Spaniard. We've got to do what he says to get Sue back. And batten down my hatch, it's a sorry thing to me to have to do what that swab says. Avast, then. Come along with us, Dickon. You've been a great help to us up to now. Hold on just a second till I lash on me peg legs. It's still lying where, where it fell when you heaved it at El Testy. Go ahead, Dickon. We'll go in advance. We'll head right for the hole. Down here along the companionway. Nothing can happen to Sue. We can't let it happen. I know, Mr. Grange, that you're at your wit's end about your sister. But there's one thing I want to make clear. We know all about this cruise now, and we know all you had planned. We know the reason for every list of port, you might say. Well, you're still the owner of the ship, Paul Parrot, and you have the right to say about her. You're to say what's the purpose of the cruise and where she goes. But from now on, as captain, I'm true master of this ship. What we do aboard, how everything's run above or below deck, I'm to say that. I'm to be true master of this ship from now on. Is that understood, Mr. Grange? Yes, Captain, you're right. 
Uh, Skipper, that's your duty. I know my place from now on. Avassus! I wish to be alone. Come ahead, Dickon. Here's the hatch to the hole. Down we go. I'd say, Captain, that you'd better let the swab know that you're here and that you've come peaceable. Or he's apt to think that you're sneaking up on him and, and he might even harm Miss Sue. You're right, Dickon. Avast there, Altesti. This is Captain Dalton speaking peaceable. We're here to talk terms with you. There's no answer. Do you think he's in the hold? Maybe he stayed back in the secret passageway. Oh, good Lord, I hope nothing's happened to Sue. It isn't likely he's in the passage. My guess is that he's hemmed himself in someplace among these empty whale oil casks. Blow me down, I believe you're right, Captain. Look over to the starboard ceiling. Do you see how those casks are stacked around in a circle and very high? They were never stowed down here like that. Ah! Scuttle the lumber ship! Ram him amidships! Ah! Stow that, you slab sided animal! You're in a bad enough squall as it is. Ahoy there, thou testy. We're here on a peaceful mission. Will you talk terms with us? Come forward to this group of casks. We have built a fortress here, so do not try any tricks. He said we built a fortress, Captain. Who else does he mean by we? Shiver me, Timber, sir. Look, the iron's there, where you had Red Mulhooly chained up. They're empty. So that's it. He's freed Mulhooly, and they're both back of those casks. Is Mulhooly back there with you? Of course. We work together. Uh, Captain, you and Senor Grange approach the casks. The others must stand ten paces behind you. And don't try any tricks. Go ahead, Captain. We'll stand back. All right. But how do we know you won't heave that knife at us? Uh, you are a fool, Captain. <laughs> if I threw a knife at you, how could I harm the girl I am holding as hostage? That sounds reasonable. Avast, then. We're here. Now, what do you want us to do before you return the girl unharmed? You must outfit a whale boat with a month's provisions in case we are sometime at sea. You must pile all weapons aboard the ship in the bow, and you and all the crew must stand in the stern. You yourself must lower the boat with Mulhooly and myself and the girl in it. The girl? Oh, what do you mean? You will also supply us with an empty cask. As soon as we have been set afloat, we lash the little lady to the casks and set her in the sea. Then you can pick her up and take her aboard. Of all the outrageous plots that I ever... Careful of your tongue, Senor Grange. You have nothing to gain by it. Very well. We'll do whatever you say. But understand this, Altesti. The girl must be returned unharmed. I assure you she shall be. If you doubt about her now, you may see her. See? Look. He's lifting her above the casks. She's waving. Sue, Sue, are you all right? I'm fine, Ezra. You and Captain Dalton mustn't worry about me. Just do whatever you think best. All right, Sue. Very well, Altesti. We'll do as you say. I hate to do this, you build scum. But our hands are tied. There's nothing we can do. We'll have the whale boat ready in 30 minutes. You are very sensible, Captain. Much more sensible than I thought. Uh, one more condition. When we go above, Captain, you must walk ahead of us right before us. I do not trust your fists. You strike quickly and very well, as my companion here, Senor Mulhooly, can attest. Ah, oh, stow <laughs> that. I'll get even with him for that someday. Aye, aye, Mulhooly. I look forward to a pleasant scene when we meet again. Ah, be sure, Senor Capitan, that the whaleboat you prepare for us is equipped with canvas properly trimmed. We shall need a sail, for we will wish to leave you in quite a hurry. Blaster, you think of everything. Very well. Wainwright and Dickon, come here. You heard the conditions this swab Altestia set for us. Aye, sir. We'll have to comply in every detail. I'll remain here until they come out of their hiding place. Then I shall walk before them, just as they said. Yeah, it's blooming dangerous. The lover can stab you in the back. I'll have to take that chance. Don't turn around, sir. Something blooming funny is happening to one of those casks on the top row, over where Altestia's voice was coming from. What do you mean? It's rocking very slowly to and fro, and it's always moving further in. Blow me down. What could that be? Suffering whitefish. I know, Captain. Johnny went away from the cabin ahead of us. I lay you that he stowed away in that cask and he's losing his balance. I think, sir, that if Johnny is in that cask, he knows what he's doing. Boil me and blubber the cask is ready to topple over. I've got to look. Avast. There it goes. Falling inside their stockade. What is it? How did that fall I'll grab his knife, and if you step forward and turn around to me, I'll jab it into your back. Come on, rush the cask. It's our one chance. Why, you little, you little heron frightening me with a dirt. I'll show you, count on it. Oh, 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 he hit me with a stave. Oh. Johnny, oh. watch out. I'll hey. show you. Heave the cast aside, men. Oh, Johnny. Oh. Johnny. You've reached the end of your rope, Mulhooly. Stow me in the briny. Look, 
There's Johnny beating him over the head with a piece of that cask. And Sue standing behind him with a knife. And El Testi's lying on the floor out. Dead to the world. Stand aside, Mulhooly. We've got you. You win. I give in. It was all his idea. I wouldn't have hauled a girl. What are you going to do with me? What usually becomes a mutineers and murderers, Red? I knew it. I knew it. I knew if I cast in with that snake, I'd swing in the end. I knew it. Wainwright, take him away and put him back in irons. Then lash El Testi here. I think it'll be quite a few minutes before he wakes up, though. Sue, thank heaven you're safe. Oh, Brother Ezra, I'm so glad it's all over. And a braver pair of young ones than her and the lad I've never heard of on land or sea. Johnny, you've got the courage of the best of men, and you can lay to that. I had to do it, Captain. It's a miracle you weren't hurt when you fell with that cask on top of Altesti. Oh, I just got a couple of scratches. A vast lad. How did you ever do it? Well, I just sneaked down here in the hold, behind all these casks. And those two men were so busy piling up casks to make that stockade... They never even heard me. Then, while they were talking to you, I climbed up the casks. I always was good at climbing trees back on the farm, and I knew none of the casks had lids on them. So I crawled in that one right over Al Testi and watched my chance to rock it and make it fall on him. You've saved my sister, lad, and helped get these blackguards. Yes, Mr. Grange, and just what do you propose to do about it? I've been a money-grabbing fool, Captain. I suppose it always works out this way when you try to cheat. Well, I, I know when I'm wrong. I bought Ezekiel Kipp's interest in that treasure map, and as outfitter of the crews, I suppose I'm rightfully entitled to half the minerals we find. But so help me, the other half goes to Johnny Robbins. Mr. Grange, thank you. Oh, Brother Ezra, you're a darling. Now, Sue, watch out for my cravat. You're mussing me all up. Mr. Grange, you've come through like a real man. We all make mistakes. And I'm proud to shake the hand of a man who admits his mistakes and makes them good. Yeah, thank you, Captain. And from now on, it's bend on all canvas for the island in the South Sea, which is to be our goal. Blow me down. This is a happy time for all of us. I've not felt so good since I caught me first whale. Ah, smooth sailing ahead. Smooth sailing from here on out. And so, thus ends our story of the cruise of the Paul Parrot. With Altesti and Mulhooly caught at last, with Johnny Robbins in for a large share of a great treasure, with Mr. Grange coming through like a true, honest New Englander, and with Captain Dalton in full command of his ship, all's well. For from this moment on, we know that no ship ever sailed the sea on a happier journey than this. The cruise of the Paul Parrot. Your Paul Parrot announcer is Dave Ward. <laughs>